After a uh, li- little week off, you know, like uh, like many of the top players, the Honda <laughs> was not doing it for us. So we're, we're back in action. One of us, Jason Sobel, is, is live from Bay Hill currently. You can uh, read his picks. He, he tweets it out. It's on the Action Network. As well as Links and Locks podcast, find that and hear them all week long with uh with the caddy on uh, Sirius XM channel is ninety two. I think so. Yeah, yeah, ninety two. So, yeah. um, what's uh what's the buzz out of Bay Hill, bro? Yeah, John, I, I like the fact that you and I have a designated podcast here where yeah. uh, we only show up for the big events. <laughs> um, you know, I, I I will be very very honest with you. I've uh, been doing this for a long time, and uh, many many times over the years, I've shown up on site at a PGA tour event and in two minutes done an interview with someone who goes, what's the buzz out there? And I, I, I usually like to kind of, you know, guess around, well, you know, lots of players warming up, you know, the weather and this is going on. I, I'm, I'm going to tell you right now, I got here about five minutes ago. I, there's no buzz. There's a bunch of guys right in front of me on the range. I don't know. The wind's blowing a little bit. I, I haven't quite gotten a, a sense of the buzz yet, but I just got here. Okay, before we dive into the tournament, obviously, you know, once you you'll be talking to these guys the next couple of days, I would imagine the, the live buzz, uh, CW live thoughts. So, uh, first of all, very funny because I was one of these people who um, denigrated the deal for live to uh, sign with CW. I'm like, I can find CW if I tried. Well, uh, Friday night, fell asleep watching like Seinfeld reruns or something like that. Saturday afternoon. I got home from playing golf, turned on the TV, and the TV's on the same channel that it had been on the night before. And Liv is on the TV because the Seinfeld reruns were on the CW. And I'm like, well, okay, there you go. That's how you find Liv Golf if you want on your TV. I just have to luck into it. And so I watched it for a little while. I, I don't know. I mean, look, I've been saying the same thing for a while now. If you like Liv more than you like the PGA Tour, I'm so happy for you that you found something. I'm sure there's people out there that have been watching XFL games saying, Man, the NFL, it takes too long. They don't get the cool, like, you know, fourth and 15 type play for an onside kick. And I like some of the stuff that they're doing on XFL. And I'm going to be a big XFL fan and like it more than the NFL. I get it. If you have the need to feel like you're a big fish in a small pond and you want to be a fan of the alternative nature of the sport there, I I get that. I I feel like there's there's people out there that want to be that for live. That's fine. Look, I got no problem. You like live? Hey, more power to you. Go ahead. There's choices out there. There's options. But I will tell you that I thought the tension, the pressure, the drama on the PGA Tour at the Honda Classic this past Sunday, I thought was as high as any we've seen at a non-major in the last couple of years. Chris Kirk uh, on the road back from sobriety uh, to sobriety, um, you know, trying to make that comeback uh, full circle and win for the first time in eight years. Eric Cole, who's had a crazy journey in his own personal life and professional career. Ryan Gerard, who's a Monday qualifier. I, I just thought that everything around that last 90 minutes of the telecast was uh, terrific viewing. And so it wasn't that for me, at least for live and look, if there are others out there and I've seen people on Twitter saying, Charles Howell, the third winning this golf tournament, it was great. It was great theater. It was great drum. If you feel that way, I'm happy for you. I'm not going to argue with you. Go ahead. I didn't feel that way. I thought the PGA Tour event was fantastic at the Honda. And uh, look, this is exactly what they need. I don't know if there's script writers out there for the PGA Tour, like people accuse the NFL of having. But if there were, this is exactly what they needed, which was two really good storylines down the stretch on a week when most of the best players weren't playing. Yeah, one of my takes on Liv, like you said, it's much easier to find than we all thought. I saw a lot of people... Uh, tweeting out the picture. It's, it was literally right next to NBC on the guide, I think, for Comcast. And for me, YouTube TV, it comes right up. They, they cannot have Peter Uline and Charles Howell battling it out. Like, they, they gonna the guys they gave $150 million to, they're going to need a couple of them in the mix every single week. I mean, they're not have – I mean, Bryson, you, I'm sure you've been to Mayako, but pr- the one issue they're going to have, right, they don't have access to these sweet courses. So they're playing these second-rate courses, and some of them are – kind of target golf so bryson's irrelevant dj doesn't yeah. really care i mean he can get hot or whatever cam if, if those guys aren't in the mix no one's going to care about these other, either the older guys or some of the other randoms so the randoms on the pga tour playing on nbc there's a reason the nfl loves nbc because it's the most watched channel in america is going to do two and a half million people when it's chris kirk and eric cole i've never heard of the guy but it didn't matter like you said the last 
couple holes, which, you know, is what okay. I watched, was, was fantastic. Yeah, I agree with all of that. Um, I don't know way that you manufacture live having the Cam Smiths of the world and uh, DJ on top of the leaderboard. You can't. And so at some point, you're going to have Charles Owl winning by seven shots or whatever he did. And uh, I don't know. I, I, I feel like that's not even part of necessarily the nature of what they're trying to do, which is, uh, you know, I look at the PGA Tour as competition. I look at Live as more entertainment. And the people who are watching Live are probably watching less for the competitive aspect of it and more for the entertainment aspect. And um, look, you're going to get the entertainment. They're playing loud music. They're wearing shorts. They're having fun. They're uh, wearing their team colors. I, look, again, uh, you know, it's not my thing. I know it's not your thing. I know a lot of people, it's not going to be their thing. But there are going to be some people who, who enjoy that more. And I, I don't know who you are, and I don't know how you can watch the last four or five holes of regulation, the playoff hole, the Honda Classic, and say, nah, I thought Charles Howell winning by a bunch at Mayakoba was more interesting and more intriguing. But there are people out there who feel that way or at least say that they feel that way. And, again, uh, that's fine. They could be that. I, I'm okay with it. Not going to bother me. Transitioning from Liv, I, I, I would say post-2020, one of the best golf moments Major or non-major has got to be those couple days with Bryson hitting it over the water uh, where you're sitting. Just in terms of a viral moment, it transcended golf. Uh, NFL people, were, uh, sports people were into it. it. It was cool. And this event had kind of fallen off. The top players were not in. Now with the money, you know, kind of forced by live, however we want to put it, all the top guys are here. Uh, I, you know, you know a lot more players than me, but one thing I've heard over the years that like Tiger, who won this place a lot, hated this course. A lot of guys hate this place because it's hard, you know, and, you know, the wind's coming. I, what do you expect? Because the field is loaded. Obviously, the money drives them out. Do you expect a normal leaderboard like Riviera, or is this course a little more unique that it could be chaos? I think more because of the weather, it's going to level the playing field a little bit. Uh, the winds are going to come through. It's like it's Tuesday midday as we're talking right now, and uh, the, the flags are already blowing around. It's pretty windy out here. Uh, looking at the forecast, Thursday, eh, about a one, one and a half club wind. Friday really gets going. I mean, gusts up to the mid 40s right now. And again, it's Tuesday. That can change and get uh, lighter, get heavier. I mean, we could see wind gusts up to 50 by the time. Well, it, ha it happened Friday last year at the, play at the at the players, right? It got, it got out of control. Last year here. Last year here, five under one. Two of the last three years, we've had five under and four under is the winning score of this golf tournament. And that's all. Uh, because of the weather, it's uh, it's wind and it's it's hot and windy. And when it's hot and windy, as you know, golf course gets baked out. And these greens are really, really difficult to hold. Um, they're difficult to hold in normal conditions. They're really difficult to hold when they get fast and firm. And there's a 40 mile an hour wind blowing through here. John Rom, six and a half to one. Like it? No, not even <laughs> a little bit. If there is some kryptonite for Superman, it may be Bermuda greens. He has never won in the state of Florida, any of his 10 career PGA tour victories. And so I uh, look, I, I don't think I'm betting him anywhere that number right now, but certainly not here and probably not next week either. Who's your pick? I'm going Will Zalatoris. I get that he's not a hundred percent yet. And I get the putting stroke. There's been a few viral videos. There was one back at farmers where it looked really ugly, but I picked him here last year and he was in the middle of losing strokes to the field in six straight, events with the putter right now he's gained strokes in six straight events with the flat stick and so um i'm not going to sit here and say that he's the best putter on the pga tour but it's been better than field average for the last six and that's him playing against the best players as well so it's not like he's uh picking off good weeks against uh poor players or anything like that so uh, i think the putter is there i think the ball striking's there he has said that he won't be a hundred percent from this back injury until April. But I do think sometimes with lowered expectations come better results with some of these professional golfers. And I'm hoping for that with Zalatoris this week. You know, there are a couple guys, uh, obviously the, the high end. I mean, we got three guys right now hovering below 10 to one. Now they win a lot and Rory, not necessarily, but he's always in the mix. You know, a guy like Justin Thomas, Tony Finau, who you would say would have some win equity just on a weekly basis on the PGA tour, you know, are both hovering around more that 25 to one number. 
Uh, you know, Jason Day now feels like he's a little too high, right? Like him more 50, oh, 60 yeah. to one more than oh. up getting lower than 30 to one. Like I, I got to punt the brakes there, but JT, who I put a lot of money on the Riviera and wasn't very good. And Finau, who is, you know, just kind of slow and steady so far this year. What, what do you think about those two guys from a value standpoint? I mean, tip, th- those guys, I mean, when they're playing well, can be 12, 13 to one on a given week. The value is great. Look, there are very few events during the course of the season where those two guys are at 25 to one and they're not an auto bet. This week is one of those few weeks. And I say that, John, because I'm looking at players who aren't just here because it's a designated event. I'm looking for guys who come here every year, who like this golf course, who like the test, who like the fact that pars mean something on this golf course. JT has been back here in about seven or eight years. And the reason for that is, is because he just doesn't like it that much. It's hard. It beats you up the week before a big-time event with the Players' Championship coming up next week. And so I look at JT and I say, you know what? 25-1 to one's a great number. I'm with you. I bet him a few times on the West Coast, and that, of course, didn't work out. But I, I'm not getting after him. And, again, uh, there are very few times during the year when JT's 25-1 to one that I won't jump at the chance. But the fact that he hasn't played here most years in the past, I think since his rookie year, yeah, Boy, that 15, really just pushes yeah. me off of them. I'm, I'm looking for guys who are essentially going to be here anyway. And that's, quite frankly, that's what we've seen in both Phoenix and at Ribs so far over the last uh, two of the last three weeks. Those prior designated events, the guys who are up there on the leaderboard is guys who normally play there anyway, not guys who said, well, I guess I have to throw it on the schedule because, well, I'm one of these top players and I have to go play there. We saw Rory in Phoenix is a great example. Phoenix – Great golf course for him. Uh, you know, should go out there and play well. Didn't like the vibe. He was never quite into it. Didn't play his best golf. And the reason for that is because he, he just doesn't play there anyway. He only played there once. No. And that was during COVID when there weren't a whole lot of fans out there. So, um, you know, I think you have to look at guys who have played in the past and were coming here anyway, even before it was a designated event. So then another guy right in that range who's played here consistently would be Victor Hovland. Yeah. You know, one thing, you know this, I've never been there, but the, I guess the greens are bigger, a little less chip. You're either on the green or probably in the water, so he keeps the wedge out of his hand. Would, would you like Victor Hovland then more this week than, than J.D.? Yeah. yeah, I do like Hovland. Hovland's not a guy that I've been on this year at all, but unlike, say, Augusta National in about five or six weeks, there are not these tight chipping areas where he's got to pick it clean. If his ball does miss the green, and we all know about his – problems uh, around the greens he's gonna get a, a a lie in the rough where he can get under the ball and pitch it up in the air and i don't think that's as much of a problem for his maneuver as trying to pick it clean off those tight lies so i do like hobland a lot should have won here last year yeah. started out 69 66 finished 74 75 finished the sheriff's second place who's really close to winning this thing over scotty scheffler i i would not be surprised if victor hobland picks one off this week Okay, a couple longer shots around 70, 80 to 1. And, you know, it's probably safer to bet these guys top five, top 10. But Keegan Bradley, last year, Florida, win pumping players was excellent. He's been playing well, drives the ball well. Gary Woodland shown sides of life a couple weeks ago at Riviera. Another guy, I'm pretty sure he lives in Florida, tough golf course, yep. windy conditions. He plays this course, you know, this kind of Florida swing every year. I mean, it, th- that's about as long as I'll go, about 70, 80 to 1. But what, what do you think about those two guys? Really like those two guys. I'm going to throw Tommy Fleetwood in the mix for that range as well. And I, I'll even give you Keith Mitchell. Keith's a little too short for me this week for an outright, considering he's only still won once, even though he has a pair of top fives in his last three starts. But I, I do like that range. And I'm looking at flushers. This is team no putt this week. And what I mean by that is the greens are going to get fast. They're going to get baked out. It's going to be windy. Give me the best ball strikers. And you know what? Two putting for pars all over this golf course is not going to be a bad thing. I think you have to look at this event sort of the way you look at a U.S. Open, which is not who's going to make the most birdies, but who's going to make the fewest mistakes. And the guys who uh, drive it well off the tee, the guys who hit solid approach shots and will be on the greens, those are the guys that I like this week. You know what? If I happen to make a few putts, great. They probably have a good chance of winning. But if not, they will still be up there because of the ball striking prowess. So, it's those names again: Keegan, Tommy Fleetwood, uh, Keith Mitchell, Gary Woodland, and I'll give you two if we go a little bit deeper. Uh, I'm watching him right now on the right side of the range. He's right next to Mr. Palmer's umbrella, but 
Christian Bezaden, who who's very good around the greens. And if you miss greens, he's the guy that I want getting up and down. He's a member here at Bay Hill. And he's finished in the top 20 each of the last three years. He's about 130 to one right now. I don't yeah. know that he's going to win, but top 10s, top 20s, definitely in play for him. And then if I'm going really deep at 250 to one, a Ooh. guy who isn't afraid to go out and win against a big field because he's done it in the past. He's got some form. He's played well here in the past. How about Danny Willett this week, who's starting to play some golf again? Okay. Former Masters champion? Yeah. Okay. I I like a good long shot. Okay, I'm going to end it on this. I guess you have to commit as a PGA Tour player to the tournament by, what, Saturday morning, Friday night? Is that why Tiger tweeted up? Friday evening. Do you you expect to tweet then while players are on the course either Thursday or Friday from Tiger – See you guys in a couple of days or uh, or no? I do. I have no insight. I have no knowledge, inside knowledge of this. But um, it would surprise me more if Tiger doesn't play next week's Players' Championship than if he does. I, I think that as long as he got home from Riviera and was in one piece and could feel okay, go out and hit balls a couple of days later, I would think there's no reason he can't get in uh, another set of reps. First of all, just to prepare for Augusta and prepare for the upcoming major championship season. But the second part of this is that Tiger, of course, been a very vocal leader of the PGA Tour over the past year with all the tumultuousness going on with the PGA Tour and with Live Golf. I would think that Tiger wants to support the PGA Tour as much as he can, and there's no better way to support the Tour right now than showing up for their flagship event at TPC Sawgrass. And a little like Augusta, right? He knows that course so well. It's not like he has to grind Monday through Wednesday. He could just show up kind of Wednesday, he hit balls at his yeah. house Monday, Tuesday, and be ready to no, roll. No pro-am, no pro-am on Wednesday. That helps. I, yeah, the weather should be pretty good. I, I I, would think that this would be right up his alley. He can he can show up, like you said, Tuesday evening, Wednesday morning, and just go out there and play. From a gambling standpoint, there was so much unknown when he played Riv, and I, he was definitely better than anyone thought. Would you say there would be like a little value on a Tiger Woods, like top 20 at the players, given – the signs of life that he showed at Riv, he's had success at the players, or is still the the field so deep, it's just difficult. It's never been his favorite golf course. I know he's won there he's twice, won he's almost won there twice, just because yeah. he's the best player in the world, and yeah. you know for twenty years, and so by accident you're going to win everything at some point, other than uh, at Riviera. So, um, I no, I would wait for the top twenty play till we get to Augusta, and that's where you know if you want to, if you're going to throw, let's say you're putting twenty bucks on them. At the players for a top 20 and 20 at, on them at Augusta for a top 20. I just take 40 and save it for the Masters because, like I said, he, he's never quite loved TPC Sawgrass. Now he's a different player now. He doesn't play with as much power. I know the swing speed's still up there, but he's more of a precision type player than he was 10, 15, 20 years ago. So maybe the course plays to his strengths a little bit more now than they did before, but I still, I, he's just never quite been in love with that golf course. And so, um, I, I don't think it's a health issue. I think it's more of a uh, Tigers is kind of ramping up. He's looking past that one to the next one. And so I would just stay away until we get to the major championships. Well, have fun at Bay Hill. Wear your windbreaker and uh, let's enjoy the week. It's too hot. I know it's windy, but it's 90. Can't 90 degrees? Yeah. <laughs> well, you got no state income tax there. You guys are doing okay. <laughs> <laughs> We're doing fine. Yeah. <laughs> see you. See you, Sobel. Thanks, buddy.